All right, welcome to part two on the Yamaha, I believe it's a 1980 XT500. Last video, we got this thing home and uh, we cleaned out the carburetor. Uh, we found out that it has spark and uh, we attempted to start it last video. And I was probably kicking this thing for, I don't know, a good hour straight. And all it did was start on fire. You can go check out last video if you want to see it start on fire. And then it, uh, it just would backfire like a ton and then kick back. So that was really fun for the, the hour I spent doing that. Um, we checked a couple different things out. Um, we, we checked to see if it was getting gas. I put gas directly down the carburetor. I put gas directly down the spark plug hole. Nothing. Didn't even pop over. Then we took off the pipe. Um, the pipe was, you can take off the silencer right here. I thought maybe that was plugged, causing it not to fire. Um, and that was good. We checked the air filter and took that out. Um, what else did we do? Uh, checked the spark plug again, and it was bright blue spark. So it wasn't that. So really the only thing left to check on this thing is the timing. Um, timing plays a huge part in any bike, but for the XT500s, a lot of the time the timing is, you know, gets off on them. I've looked at a couple forums and a lot of people have trouble starting these bikes. It's like a super common problem. And a lot of people say that the timing skips on these. So we're gonna take off the valve cover today, right here, and check the timing. Um, it looks like there's a lot of bolts holding this thing on. And then oil lines coming in through this. We've got the um, tachometer cable. We've got engine mount. We've got other oil lines coming from the frame. So there's a lot of stuff going on. We've got the decompression release. So we've gotta be, pretty noteworthy on where everything goes. But I don't think it'll be too bad. Hopefully if that bell cover clears that frame, that's the only thing I'm worried about. I think it will. But let's get going on that. Um, we gotta set this thing to top dead center. To do that, you have to take off this cover and then there's a little mark with a T that we have to line up. Cover comes off pretty easily. Just a couple Allens on here. Might already be set to top dead center. Let's see. Does not look like it. All right. Let's see. So there's the mark right here. It's kind of funny where they put this. You can see right underneath the gasket, see the little arrow right there. You can miss it if you uh, aren't looking. But that needs to be lined up with, there's a mark on the flywheel. We're gonna rotate the flywheel and come to that mark. We'll take this flywheel here, see if we can come to the mark. Here we go. Right here, you can see the T. And it's the line right next to the T. So if we look close here, There's a line right next to the T, right there. So that's where we're gonna line up that arrow. So right now it's lined up. We're gonna check down the spark plug hole and make sure that piston's at top dead center. So if we look down the cylinder here, I don't know if you guys can see that, you can see the piston's right there. That's uh, at the highest point. I just rotated the crank again and uh, that's right at the highest point, so we know we're at top dead center right there. So what we can do is start taking apart the top end here, see if we can get to the cams and everything. I guess we just start unbolting everything. Now 
around as well. Looks like that's holding on a clip as well. That should come right off. There's one right here too. All right, we can see the engine mounts off. Let's get some of these hoses off now. I don't think there's any oil in this thing anyway, so it doesn't, shouldn't be draining too much. Wouldn't think, yeah. Then there's a 10 mil holding in this tack. Still gone. There. And that's held on by a screw right there. Let's put that right back in. That line's out of the way. Let's try to get this 10 millimeter right there. that holds that in place. There might be a little sear clip we have to take out too. Yeah, there's a little pin we have to take out. This little pin right there. You guys can see. That was holding that wire in. Now this should pull out. out of here. Okay. That's out of the way. Let's get this tube off the rest. Of the Let's get this line off. Alright, we need the decompression release. Held on by an Allen right here. This just pops out of here. There. We can put this back in. Let's see if there's any oil coming out. There might be a little bit. Now we can start unbolting all this stuff. Those aren't too bad. Kind of difficult to take off. All right, we gotta get this guy off of here. It looks like a 10 mil. I think we can leave these covers on for now, the valve covers. Then there's a little Allen over here. And a couple other 14 mils on the other side. It's not, not too bad. Okay, I think everything is off the valve cover. Let's give it a little tap with the rubber hammer. See if it pops off.
that side. Huh. I wonder if we have to drop the engine down. Looks like what we might have to do is take the engine mounts off right here and where else? Down there. And maybe the engine can tip forward and that valve cover can come off. I'll work at it a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that's what you have to do. All right, so checking the timing, we can see that, so you can see the little dot right there is lined up with the surface of the, the head right here. So the timing is spot on, unfortunately. And then you can see the cam lobes in here are pointing in opposite directions. So you see that one's pointing that way. And this one over here is pointing that way. And then I just push down in the valves. The valves aren't stuck or anything. So I am wondering what is going on because the timing's spot on. And just to make sure it didn't move, down here, we can see we're still at top dead center, right here. So something is definitely going on. Um, I don't know what's going on. We measured the compression last video and that was at 110. So it should have enough to fire over, pop over and be enough. Yeah, it's just weird. Timing spot on. Everything's perfect. I did, however, find this is a kick indicator window. I did not see this before. So this kind of tells you when to kick. Um, these XT500s are known for being just a pain in the butt to start. So I wonder um, if this little window would help us. It's called a kick indicator. Just saw that on there. We have to clear out this little window right here and see if that clears up. Yeah, look at that. So that was just clogged. So that's supposed to tell you when to kick, I think. And maybe that's what we were missing before. Maybe everything was perfect. We just didn't know when to kick it. So maybe that'll help. All right, so we're gonna put everything back on the um, cam cover, bolt everything back down. We've got this little window now. So now that we have this window, I looked it up online. Basically what you do is you wait for the little metal piece to come around. When you see that metal piece, you stop and then you give it a full kick. So you're gonna be using the decompression release until that metal piece comes around and then full kick once you see that. That basically signals when You've got like the lowest compression, the lowest resistance in the cylinder. So then you can kick it over and it will spark right at that time. So I'll show you guys when I spin over the engine here. You can see right now, you can see the metal piece through it. I'll rotate the engine here. You can see it disappear, see that? It's kind of hard to see. Oh, it looks like it's in gear right now. But uh, it'll come back around and right when you see that you give it a full kick. All right, here we go. We're gonna follow the right procedure. We're not gonna give it any gas whatsoever. Let's see if she fires up. Well, that's not working, so I don't really know what's going on. 
We're gonna play with it a little bit more. All right, let's try this again with the choke off. Let's see what happens here. Oh, she just fired up. Um, I'm gonna try to fire it up again, but uh, she was smoking pretty good. Um, this thing hasn't been fired up in 20 years and it finally fired up, probably for 10 seconds here. So let's see if I can do it again. What I did was adjust the throttle a little bit and uh, fired right up. I'm hoping I can duplicate this. Let's see, hopefully I can. Oh yeah, I think we're close guys. She fired up. Smoking pretty good though. We're gonna get this pipe back on here, tighten everything back down, and I go from there. Let's see if we can get this thing to idle. We're, we're pretty close. Then we gotta do some oil change on this, because I don't think there's much oil in it. So, let's kick it over again, see what happens here. She's smoky, very smoky. It's idling pretty good now. I think the 
got a leak of some sort over here. I was just burning out the old oil on everything. Yeah, it looks like it's just burning off stuff. That was sitting for a long time on here. Alright, well, we got some new oil for it. This thing takes like 2.3 quarts. We're going to uh, do the oil change. I don't think there's much oil in it. And we got a new filter for it, so. Let's do the oil change next. Now that's all warmed up. Awesome. <laughs> Man, that took a long time to get running. I kicked that thing probably. Gotta be a thousand times. <laughs> But we got her. All right, that felt really good to get that thing going. Um, I did not think we were going to. Man, it was just a beast to get going. But uh, that kicking technique, it still it took 300 kicks to get it going. I think it was just so clogged up with oil in the pipe and stuff that it just took forever. You saw how much it smoked. It was just packed full of oil. But um, anyway, we're gonna do the oil change. You can see the bolt right there for it. It's just... Uh, I already got it loose, so we can just take that out right now. See if any oil comes out of it. Probably nothing in it. 20 years ago. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Not a whole lot in there. There's supposed to be almost three quarts, so. We'll let that drain, and then we gotta get this filter out too. Sitting right here, I wonder what that looks like. All right, so the oil doesn't look too bad. Um, I don't see any metal chunks or anything coming out, so that's a good sign. Kind of get a little on my finger. There's no metal shavings in there or anything. It's pretty clear. So I think we're good there. Yeah, that's pretty clear. All right, so this is basically done draining. Um, just a trickle left. Probably like a fourth of a quart in here. That's it. I mean, there's barely anything in there. So that was not good. Um, I don't know if it's burning oil really bad or what. Maybe the rings are just junk, or the, the valve seals are junk, um, or the valves aren't sealing all the way. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll get some fresh oil in there, new filter, and see if it, uh, see if it smokes and stuff. All right, let's see how bad the filter is now. It'd be pretty interesting to see. Little oil in there. I think there's some metal chunks though. Oh, maybe not. What kind of filter was it? Alright, well, that looks pretty good. No metal chunks in there either. Let's kind of wipe that out. Looks pretty clean. Nothing too bad in there. Well, it looks like the filter matches up perfectly. You can see. So we can install this guy. It goes in this way. So the hollow part where it can, you can put your finger in goes in. And it came with a new O-ring for the cover. We can install that. All right, new O-ring gasket installed on this thing, so this thing can go back on. You can see that little guy needs to come out too. There's a replacement for that. Came with the kit. So that goes right there. Okay. Goes 
down like this. Two point three quarts of oil going in. All right, so I put about half a quart in. Um, and we're going to start it up and then continue the process of adding oil it has to get pumped in through the system. So we'll start it up, let it run for about 10 seconds and then pour the rest of the oil in. All right, so the oil change is done. That process is a little bit time consuming. It has to start and stop the machine probably 10 times just to get that oil to pump through. We put in 2.3 quarts. Let's just check it quick. See if we did our job correctly here. It should be filled to the full mark. And we're perfect. All right, so that's good to go. Next step is getting on the tank and the seat. Tires look like they're somewhat holding air, for a little bit at least, so that's good. Yeah, they'll hold air for a ride. Awesome. All right, let's see if she starts back up, and then let's take this thing for a little rip. Should be pretty fun. Hopefully, like I said before, the clutch works. Get some gas in it. Older.
think we gotta take off the air box. So I'm thinking the air box is restricting it. So let's take off the air box. Sounds like it is, at least. Sounds like it's not getting enough air. All right, so it was kind of sputtering and not running the greatest when I was taking it for a ride. I think it might be due to the pipe. I'm pretty sure the pipe is plugged up. So let's try taking off the pipe, this part even though it doesn't really come off unless you take the shock off, which kind of sucks, but um, we'll try to take that off. All right, first ride uh, wasn't the greatest in the world. Um, it just wouldn't rev out. I ended up taking off the pipe, it didn't help. I ended up taking off the air filter, it didn't help. And then I saw this, a little leak of oil right there, and I came over and inspected. Check this out believe it has a base gasket leak. You can see it's leaking out of the base gasket, so I'm guessing either the gasket blew or something happened. You can see the gasket's all wet underneath here. So it probably needs a new gasket and pro probably needs new rings and a rebuild, honestly. So I don't want to ride it any further than what I did because I don't want to wreck it. Um, but yeah, it definitely needs a new base gasket, so, yeah, you can see in there, you can see the oil coming right through that gasket, so that's not good, so that's causing an air leak and it's just running crappy, but, yeah, at least we got it running today, um, the trick was basically to was to hold down the decompression release and then look through the window right here until the little metal piece comes by then just give it one full kick and it starts every time. You have to be like exactly where it needs to be though. This bike is very very picky on where it needs to be to start it. But once you get it down, it starts every time. So anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, plans for this bike are unknown. Always a fun time working on the vintage Enduros. They're, they're pretty sweet bikes. And I'm glad we, uh, we got to revive this one. It just now needs an engine rebuild to be back to its full potential. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, we are out.